Perfect. Well, yeah, we'll just get started. Um, yeah, so my name is Greg Pobletti. Um, I'm a writer with Mixed Down Music, and it, it is an honor to be talking to singer, songwriter, Grammy Award winning artist, the incredibly bold and phenomenal Kimbra. Yeah, hey. Thank you so much. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, um, first off, how are you and where are you currently in the world? I'm in New York, which is where I live, and I just got finished with a uh, man. It's been a almost two months of touring. Um, started off in Europe uh, for a smaller run and then a really extensive um, US uh, tour. So yeah, I have a few days, well, two days off right now. Then I head to New Zealand for a couple of shows out there mm -hmm. and also just taking a little bit of time off while I'm out there. So that'll be good. Nice, nice. Yeah, I know you've been living in New York for a little bit. How has living out there or just your physical environment in general, how has that influenced your art and creative headspace? Yeah, well, I mean, New York is one of those places where inspiration is around every corner, right? Like whether it's little jazz bars and the village that you can go to or just the accessibility of so many amazing musicians um, to be like, hey, let's let's do a session at your house or, you know, that kind of culture, which, of course, is very prominent in L.A. as well. Um, but these still remain the two cities where you can just get so much um, creative uh, fire out of the cities. And I think, yeah, there's something about the both the anonymous feeling in New York that I have, like the feeling that you're just one in a million people out here. Mm -hmm. um, well, many more millions than that, right? <laughs> but um, th then also the feeling that you're intricately connected at the same time. It's like a interesting contradiction, but I feel both, you know, I feel mm -hmm. like I can be co totally anonymous and then also really connected to lots of things at the same time so that that has an impact on the way i write and the way i make music i think yeah i love that i love that yeah so i know that you've been touring the new album reckoning which is amazing by the way you know blends Thank so you. many different genres and vocal stylings and um yeah i was wondering like how as translating these songs to a live setting you know with these deeply personal songs like what does that look like for you and what do you look forward to most uh, bringing the tour back to new zealand yeah, it's been cool um, translating them for live because you start working out different parts, different angles on the songs that have a bit more impact mm -hmm. in the live setting than perhaps, you know, the things you did on the record. And that can be fun because the songs start to evolve in a new way and have different high points. And um, I enjoy that process. The fans have really enjoyed hearing the music live. I think it's it's given it an, a deeper, even a more deeper meaning to see the, the words performed, you know, like actually the story's being told um, in that context. It, it's like, I think it helps for when they go home and listen to the record, there's a new way of understanding it, you know, once you've seen the storyteller doing yeah. it in real life. Yeah. Um, a lot of the slower songs on the record are quite emotionally disclosing. So it's been um, like, uh, it's taken a lot from me emotionally, spiritually and everything to kind of perform a lot of these songs night after night. Maybe mm -hmm. I wasn't quite expecting like how much I would be, how much I would be giving from such a deep place. But I also feel like I'm doing like got a, quite a lot of healing every time I perform the songs and, and getting to um, slowly uh, move through those emotions in a new way. I mean, you do that on making a record, but mm -hmm so live you're kind of like you're in this process of giving the stories away they're they're yours always but you've had your time with them and now you're kind of slowly de detaching from being so like interwoven with all the emotions so it's a process of uh, letting them go yeah i love that i love that yeah and i know that i know that a reckoning was um, a self-released record yeah what were some of the difficulties with putting out a record on your own and how do you feel like the freedom of releasing this album channeled itself through like the writing and production process yeah i hear a lot of freedom on the record i know a lot of people i played it to in the early days as well were like wow this this sounds like an artist coming into her her power you know and like finding her voice in any way and i always appreciated when my friend said that um maybe it's just there was very very few cooks in the kitchen in the making of the record it was really just me and my co-producer ryan lott you know he was the person that i went to for all the creative um you know feedback uh so it was really just us and i mean and other producers of course that play parts on different songs they were also involved but at the end of the day the executive vision always ended up with me and ryan so there were no 
um, a and r's managers like people kind of interfering with that so i think that's why there's a focus to the record that maybe yeah it is a new step for me just to have that kind of um and also a, 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 a fearlessness that comes forward in some of the work um yeah when you're less worried about I mean, I've never made music to please people. I've always made the stuff I want to make, but you know, yeah. it's always sometimes in the back of your mind this sense that you need to um, make make certain people happy or something, or, or fulfill some sort of um, idea of what a pop song is. I think mm. a lot of that went out the window with this record, and it was just about making something truthful and um, exciting to us, you know, yeah. and trusting that if it's exciting to us, it'll be exciting to my fans as well. I love that. So you're really just embracing yourself on this record. And yeah. That's yeah, totally. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the creative side of it was just that embrace. And then obviously, you know, releasing um, without a major, major label is a, a quite a different process, but it's also empowering because you're with the help of managers or whoever's on your team, you're, you're hiring all the people that you want to be part of the uh, mission of releasing the record. And so there's a sense of autonomy as well in that, you know, cause you're, you're building your own team um, of people that believe in the work rather than it just being assigned to you, um, which it is a little more like that on a, on a major structure. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of my favorite songs from the album is the very first one, save me. It's a very emotional and very luscious ballad. Um, and I wanted to know, like, why was it important to place this song as the first song on the album, as well as the first song on the set list of the tour? Well, I mean, I think it sets a tone. Um, I think of the gong in, at the start of a meditation that, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like sends out this vibration of like um, a frequency that everyone kind of aligns to and then sort of gets still. And then you can begin the meditation or the chant or the prayer. Mm -hmm. and I don't know that song to me kind of was like a level a leveler it's like gets everyone into that place of shared human vulnerability yeah. and then from there we can start getting into like the warrior who rises out of that and the anger that is being suppressed and needs to come out and but save me is like the it's the surrender at the start of all that you know like when you hit rock bottom and you're like all right like just I'm ready now just take me like you know and when I just think it's like a conversation you know like when you get vulnerable with someone and you tell them one of your secrets they're like mm -hmm. oh well now you told me that I guess I'll tell you this yeah. and then everyone kind of just gets there's like an air of love and tenderness in the room mm -hmm. now there's courage to face everything else so yeah it's a long way of saying it just felt like a really great um place to start the record from because all great healing has to begin with a kind of admission of um of the need for each other you know the need for each other and the kind of um the fact that we do often feel very scared and fragile and you know like i think if i could start the record from that place of real truth telling yeah. then it would it would allow for all the other emotions to rise up out of that it would, it would create a space where we could hold all of that rather than just coming straight in with the banger it's yeah. like it just sets a tone it just sets a tone of like we're going we're going on a journey and all great journeys start with a kind of surrender yeah yeah so it's like when you start with this vulnerability it's it's kind of like you're like embracing you're like open arms and inviting any, everyone into you and then it's kind of like Exactly. You're creating a safe space for everyone. And I really like that. That's beautiful. That's exactly right. What you said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. And I know that you um, started the writing process a lot on piano for this album, like instead of guitar. And for me, I've always felt like piano is a very personal instrument. Like you're kind of playing yeah. it to yourself. And then while guitar, you're kind of performing, like the sound goes outwards. So I was wondering like how this initial instrumentation translated to the overall narrative of the album. Yeah, well, um, I agree with you. That's so interesting. I, I have a Wurlitzer at home, so I would play mm -hmm. on that and then on friends' pianos at their studios. But mm -hmm. um, I would send over the demos just with me playing really basic Whirly um, or piano to to Ryan. And then basically he would we he would start the instrumentation again. So he'd take my vocal and then redo, but, but using piano, but he kind of did a lot of like contorted pianos. So like, 
you know the organic instrument but then turning it into strange um, manipulations so you'll hear like the piano on different songs like the way we were or foolish thinking it'll start really simple and then it'll kind of go off into these other kind of yeah Yeah. I don't know what the word is like twisted Uh incarnations of piano so yeah it's like he was taking the original seed which was like this is a a vulnerable ballad on this instrument but then like putting a a personality to that instrument and and taking it outward um so it was cool because it honored the way it started and it's not like he sent it back with like tons of drums and everything on it's like he would keep that spirit of where they came from but also expand on it because my piano playing is very you know very basic and i still wanted to make sure that it could flower and, and blossom in the ways we needed um yeah and i mean in terms of like the songwriting being different on piano, I think you're right. It's, it is a lot more personal as a process. And I, I had to apply a simplicity to the writing because that's all I had was simple chord um, forms that I could play, you know? So, um, and there was the power of paying a lot of attention to the process because it wasn't my first instrument. So I had to, so the songs had, there's a real like devotion to every, it's very intentional because I had to be in order to write the song. I couldn't just like yeah. run about doing jazz, you know, <laughs> it, it yeah. was grounded. It was really grounded. Yeah. I love, I love Direct. That. Yeah. That's cool. And I mean, yeah, like how was working with Ryan on the album and what did he bring into the record that, you know, that you found like was refreshing for this new record? I mean, it was amazing. We actually communicated a lot over that, messaging at Marco Polo mm. so I would like make something working on the track and I'd send him a video message about it and then he would um be working on something and send something back over mm. Marco Polo and you know be like we pump each other up you know be like let's check this out and like well what I'm thinking is that you know we would kind of it was a really we were like little kids you know it was like a real childlike <laughs> energy like just both following the excitement and he added a lot of like really um wide wide and claustrophobic spaces like he's really into playing with space which was great because a reckoning was supposed to be this kind of like on one hand you've got this like really strong aggressor that's like you know explosive and cathartic and then on the other end you've got something very um tender and um that required us to play with different rooms and spaces. So he's very talented at creating, you know, a vocal that feels like really wide and open and spaces that are just so, yeah, um, sort of uh, expansive Mm -hmm. and then closing the world in and making it feel really tight and like almost too intimate. Like, I think that's what he, he brought to a lot of the productions and arrangements was this like real sense of um spatial experimentation um and then of course just his like fearlessness to play with the pop structure you know like we both knew we were making a pop record but we were also like thinking more like you know some of those bold moves that like someone like Kanye makes on his records right where it's just like all right scene change boom now we're going here like those sorts of bold cuts and, and and movements i think he he challenged me in that way to like be really bold with mm-hmm. choices and then i challenged him as well to kind of perhaps bring the pop mentality to that as well and be like you know what like let's let's play into this hook and repeat it and make it more of it you know like we, yeah. we there was a cool push and pull there from him being on a more experimental end of the spectrum me being a bit more on the um pop end and so it just felt really married in a really really good way I love that I love that dynamic yeah um one thing I wanted to ask about is like I know as someone who became known as a featured artist and who has given plenty of spotlight to amazing artists throughout your career such as you know even on this record with you know Eric the architect and Peak Sifu and everyone um in your in your opinion um what do you think makes for a great feature on a song hmm well, it has to offer a new perspective, mm-hmm. you know, like if it's just encompassing the same sort of energy, it, it doesn't really like take the story anywhere. Right. So it has to present an angle on the song that maybe is like, and that could, sorry, that that is either um, 
lyrically a different angle to make you think differently about the song or just even like rhythmically like some sort of like new syncopation or pocket or um way of playing into the beat or the music that you're like oh now i'm now i'm moving like this to it rather than you know yeah. so i think that's really important um is how someone sonically reframes the song but also how they um how they offer a perspective l lyrically that that can um that can just like add another dimension really a great feature is 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 an expansion to the song and is memorable because it's like a moment you wait for right you're like hey like now yeah like just adding an extra level and layer of um excitement and it's a chance to throw a spanner in the works like a chance to to create a surprise in a song yeah that's cool i love that i love that and kind of speaking you know continuing speaking about features i know there's an interview you did recently where you mentioned that other than pop music you wish it could expand into other genres of music like ambient or drum music essentially music without vocals um so like how significant was it that you were able to work with the album leaf on you know an artist who's known for their ambient music on a track like everglow or afterglow sorry yeah well i mean that was awesome i loved when i heard the song um i loved the mood of it like you know it's hard for me to write especially lyrics when i don't see images from a song like you know i'll get sent things and they might might be a, a good piece of work but when i close my eyes i don't particularly like see anything or feel like my instrument would add anything to it you know sometimes that's just like i'm like this is a great track but i don't think it needs me i don't hear anything that i could do that is exciting you know or, or not exciting i mean i can do something on anything but it's like does it need me you know like does it was yeah. it want that whereas that song when i closed my eyes i was like oh i see where a really airy and floaty vocal could absolutely serve this song to tell the story better you know and so when i closed my eyes i saw this relationship unfolding and i saw these um you know the this this lyric it was a poem i had about a parting of, of lovers mm -hmm. and when i heard the music i remember just pulling up the poem and then just kind of feeling like it was married to some of those words mm -hmm. um but yeah talking about instrumental music it's like if I were to do something like that, I would probably still use my voice, my instrument, but I'd be interested in like how I could tell stories without lyrics, because most of my writing process is actually in gibberish, you know, okay. or just in vocal, you know, I just know channel father name, but it's all just sounds and shapes, you know, okay. so working with my voice is just an instrument rather than a, an, um, you know, a lyrical that that would be an interesting thing one day yeah <laughs> yeah but in that case lyric did work really well i mean i think that was you know the it was uh it it added something to the song to tell a story alongside that 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 um that instrumental yeah i love that yeah and just using your vocals as like an instrumental like yeah it's definitely a different process but i really like that yeah yeah mm -hmm. um yeah so i have a couple more uh for you before we get get out of here but yeah um i know if you um you've expressed concerns about being presented as this pop star um and fame in general um and now that you've become an artist who's kind of grown more into their own especially with this latest album what kind of advice would you give to your younger self in your 20s about maneuvering through the music industry and garnering fame oh yeah um i mean i think for me the biggest threat to artists in this industry um especially young girls women you know who start out very young is just that you can sometimes lose your own voice or like your ability to trust yourself because there's so many other voices projecting their idea of what you should be doing and wearing and you know and you have you know having a team is great and having people weigh in and give guidance is important but yeah. if I you know went back and talked to my younger self I would probably just remind her to really trust yourself because that's actually the elixir that people are drawn to is the thing that you do that no one else does like your your gut instinct that your um, and I think that, like I said, that's the biggest threat in this industry is that, and, I, and I've gone through points of this as well, where suddenly I'm like, I have so many voices in my head and people saying that I've actually forgotten 
what I think, you know, like where, and that's meant I've had to go into solitude or change something in my life to go to find that again. Um, but that's sort of, that is your greatest power is your, your own inherent true voice. Um, and I think that's the best advice I could give to young artists or to myself is just set up your life and your process in a way where you can always attend to that like it's the most sacred thing you have in your life is the you know the like that when you close your eyes and you get that like mm, no i think it needs to be this you know that gut instinct this doesn't always come immediately but yeah i would tell her to to just always remember to trust yourself above all because that's the elixir of of your art that's who you are that's why you're here you know what i mean that's why you've been given these opportunities because you've trusted something in yourself that no one else can give to you it comes from within yeah yeah i think that's really heavy and just just amazing advice in general i think just living throughout life yeah um but yeah i just have one more for you um but yeah so i mean it's apparent that you know music has been such an important part of your upbringing even having you know a room named after you at the music department in your old high school um, but besides music what are some other passions you really gravitate towards and what are some artistic ventures that you wish to pursue in the future well i um i have been working on i have a lot of poems that i write and i think would be nice to publish at some point in a book mm -hmm. um i enjoy watercolors um i enjoy to do tasks that a creative but don't require me to like, be thinking a lot you know even though i mean my favorite moments in music is when my brain switches off and i'm just purely present but a lot of the music making process is also like quite analytical and like working in pro tools and doing a lot with the mind so i like hobbies that teach me to just um kind of move in the realm of instinct just mm, yeah. instinct. um creative endeavors um you know i have plans to make albums that some that I've already started on that have like rules around them, like, you know, making a record, for example, that's just a band record, like just live drums, bass, guitar, and a voice or something, you know, like putting restrictions on, on my, my creative process um, that would like really challenge me to write and perform differently. Yeah. So yeah, I'm quite drawn to like that, those ideas of like projects that are like heavily they have a container on them, which of course can inspire you to break that container, but like putting a, put it, yeah. So, or again, like I was talking about, you know, like purely drum music or purely ambient. Like I like, I have plans to kind of um, do projects where there's some kind of strict regulations on it in order to push me. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I think about in the future is, is that, and, um, and I love dogs. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. Well, whatever you have going on in the future, I know I'm going to be very excited for it because everything you've made so far has been beautiful and amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's all I have for you today. Um, thank you so much for talking with us and congratulations on the new album, the tour, and um, also happy early birthday. I know it's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. But I hope you have an amazing day and um, yeah, I mean, take it easy. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. All right. <laughs>